a2 further maths modulus function. Okay, so what I'd like to do, knowing your modulus function skills from normal maths, I'd like to have a go at just sketching each of those five equations, please. Okay, so pause there, have a go at sketching those five, and we'll have a look through some answers. Okay, so hopefully you managed to plot this cubic function just here. You thought about factorising it, you found out where it crosses, and you should have got something like that. So you can see the solutions, minus one, two, and three and you've reflected anything negative up to positive. Okay, absolutely perfect. Right, so hopefully you used your year one normal math skills, thought about what this graph looks like, and you should have found it was this sort of rational function graph. So therefore, anything negative goes to positive. So it was there and there. And so you end up with this blue graph like this. So very well done, noticing some change about the asymptotes, which we'll come back to later. Number three, same idea, a little bit more of a difficult rational function, but hopefully you managed to plot that using your rational function graph sketching skills. And then once you did that, is anything negative can be made into positive. So there we go. That's where those two functions came from. And notice in this section just here, uh, flipped up as well. Okay, but it's all about plotting your rational functions from the first year, and then once you've managed to plot it, just reflecting those in that x-axis. Okay, so what about number four? Well, think about what cosh x minus three looks like. So the cosh x graph looks like that, drops down to minus three, and then reflect that bottom bit. So we've got this sort of graph as your cosh function, and then that part there has been reflected upwards. So what well if you got that? Uh, the tanch function normally looks like that but because you've got the modulus of it this negative part comes up here so very well done if you manage to sketch those five graphs all of the graphs without the modulus should be ones that you're already aware of and the modulus function because you know that from normal maths just takes anything negative and makes it positive okay so what i'd like you to do is just try to figure out how many solutions are there to that equation just there I'm not asking you to solve it. I'm asking you to find how many solutions there will be. And that's important. I'm not asking you to solve it. I just want to know how many solutions are going to be. So while you're getting it down in your notebook, see if you can do it yourself or see if you've got an idea on how to do it. OK, so the first thing I would like you to do is just rearrange the equation to look like that. And again, you should be asking yourself why. Maybe you already know why I would I rearrange it to have the modulus function on that side, one minus shine x on this side. I could rearrange it any way I like, but that's probably going to be the easiest one in this case. So I've rearranged it. Um, why would I do that? Because what I want to do is have a look at sketching the graph. If I tried to sketch that graph just there, now that's going to be quite difficult. So by rearranging it, I now I'm now in a position where I can definitely sketch this graph, and I can definitely sketch that one just there. Okay. Uh, the other option, of course, is by taking the modulus function to the other side. I could have done shine x equals one minus mod four x four minus x squared. That would have been fine as well. Okay. But I've chosen this way, so let's stick with it. So I'm going to sketch both those graphs. So what does the modulus of four minus x squared look like? Well, I know. 4x uh, x squared minus looks like that. So 4 is going to go up. So therefore, what I'm going to end up with <clears throat> is any of the negative parts just here become positive. So we end up with that shape. Right, we know that shine x is a graph that sort of comes down, does this. No, sorry, it goes up like this. There we go, that's what shine x does. The minus shine x is going to do the opposite. So it's going to go down like that. And I'm also adding one to it, so it's going to come down, it's going to cross here. But as long as you've got a rough sketch of it, then you notice that it's only going to cross just once. And because it crosses just once, that means it's got exactly one solution. I'm not asking you to solve it, we're just asking to show how many solutions. So there we go. Using your graph sketching skills, you can show how many solutions there are. Okay, so let's say we're doing the opposite though. We want to actually solve an equation, or in this case, solve an inequality. So I would like you, just to get it down your notebook, I'm gonna look at solving that inequality just there. Okay, 
So if you want to go yourself, by all means, pause. If you want to just dive straight into the algebra, fine. I'm going to talk about that now. But I do want you just to have a go at thinking about that yourself. OK, so if you just dive straight into the algebra, as you should be aware, and as I'm going to repeat now, always be careful when you've got the modulus function and when you are solving algebra. Algebra sometimes lies to you, gives you solutions that aren't actually true when it comes to the modulus function. So you should always have an awareness of what the graph looks like. You may also have this as your first question. Can you sketch this graph to test your rational function skills? So if I look at sketching this graph, what I'm going to do is using my year one skills, find my asymptotes, find out what happens either side of the asymptotes, find out what happens at the large x values and the minus, uh, large minus x values and all that stuff. Find the intercepts and you get the sketch. Now the sketch would be down here. It would come down like this. There's my asymptotes. I've got an asymptote at zero. But because I'm working out the modulus, anything negative goes up to positive. So instead of going down like that, it's going to go up there and so on. So anything negative goes to positive. What I need to do now is I need to think about equaling two. So I'm looking for plotting the line where it's equal to two. Now, the reason for that is it tells me how many different solutions I've got. In this case, one, two, three, four solutions or four critical values. And that's where the algebra could lie to you. Because if this was something like uh, a line like that, then the algebra might tell you there's one, two, three solutions. But in fact, there's only one solution if the line is something along those lines. For example, um, y equals one minus x or so, uh, minus one minus x or something like that. Excuse me, x minus one. OK, that would, only have, that would have one solution, but the algebra would tell you three. So you do need to be careful. Right. So what do I do then? Well, now that I've got this, let's just think about where what my solutions are going to be when it's less than two. So when I'm less than two, it's anything below that line. So definitely nothing above it. So I can ignore this section and I can ignore this section just here. So these are my results. If I can find the critical value, when is this graph below that line? Well, it's definitely going to be from here back. It's definitely going to be in this section just here, so there to there. And it's also going to be in this section up here. So if I can work out these inequalities just here, noticing they're not filled in circles because it's a less than, not equal to, then I've got the answer. What I need to do though is I need to figure out these critical values. And how do I do that? I can now go back to my algebra skills and I can think, what am I looking for to solve this? Now, be aware that because it's a modulus function, this bit inside the modulus function could equal two because the modulus of two is still two. Or this bit inside this modulus function could equal minus two because, of course, the modulus would make that minus two equal to two. That's what I'm going to do now then. I'm going to look at trying to solve it. Let's set it equal to two first. So when I set it equal to two, I can now do a bit of rearranging. I can take this over to this side. So I've got 2x squared minus 2x minus 4. Rearrange, get a quadratic out and then solve it. Same with this one, except you've got minus 2x squared plus 2x plus 4. Rearrange, get a quadratic, find the solutions to that. OK, so let's have a look at solving those two. So this one just here is going to get me 3x plus 1 when I've rearranged it gets me naught equals 2x squared minus 5x minus 5. So I get some nice solutions, leaving it exact form of 5 plus or minus root 65 over 4, which is, if I can figure it out, is going to be these two solutions. So you can check with your calculator and uh, as a decimal to figure out which ones of those it is. So there's two of my critical values. The other one, hopefully, is going to find these two critical values. So I can see this one's probably going to be 1. So that's quite nice. So I get minus 1.5 and 1, or minus 3 over 2 and 1. So what do I do then? Well, now I'm in a position to work out those inequalities. It was less than that, it was between those, and it was greater than that one. So there we go. Solve the inequalities now. So anything less than 1 point, minus 1.5, 
anything between those two numbers, and finally, anything greater than that number. Okay, so we've gone how to find solutions, but we've also looked at how to solve equations and how to solve inequalities using the modulus function. What I'd like you to do is have a go at completing the exercise 4B and 4C on those two pages, just to practice your sketching skills and solving equations using the mod function.